first we have to remember that um, this is these are curves for a single firm in a competitive market and because it's a single firm in a competitive market the market as a whole all the different buyers and all the different sellers the market as a whole are um, uh, determines the price there's a demand curve and a supply curve for the whole market and from that market comes an equilibrium price this firm is just a single firm in a big market it's kind of you know one fish in a big pond and it doesn't have really much control over price uh, in fact we call this firm a price taker let's uh, let me illustrate this on the next slide here now we have the same short run cost but we've added in a blue horizontal price line at about sixty dollars so let's imagine that the market has set the price at sixty dollars this firm, it's a single firm and competitive market, uh, could theoretically raise the price, but if they did that, then there inevitably is going to be some other seller next door or down the street willing to sell at the market price, and everybody will flee this store and go down to the one that's selling it for the market price. So this single company just can't afford to sell for more than the market price. So it's stuck here at 60. Now, in theory, it could lower the price, but that's leaving money on the table because we think that this single firm in a competitive market could sell all that it wanted to at the at the market price so why bother reducing the price yes in other marketing classes there are you know price leader and uh, low price strategies and so on but in this simplified competitive market situation as long as this company can sell as many items as it wants for the market price, there's no reason for them to sell at a lower price. As a result, we call this firm a price taker. It takes the price that's in the market. Now, let's look at that price, which is $60 all the way across. That is, it can charge 60 bucks for as many items as it wants to make. And let's look at this red, let's look at this red marginal cost line. Let's imagine that our output right now is at six items. Well, at six items, we can, we can, and we're trying to decide whether to go to seven. Well, if we go to the seventh item, we can sell that seventh item for 60 bucks. That's what this blue uh, diamond is. And the, and we can call, that's the price. That's also what we would call the marginal revenue, i.e. the additional revenue we would get if we sold one more. If we made one more item, the seventh item, the cost the additional cost of making the seventh item is the marginal cost and that number is down here probably around 43 44 we'd have to look up on the table so the decision to go from six items to seven items means we can earn sixty dollars worth of money and it only costs us some forty some dollars in order to make it so that seems like a good deal we should continue to do that we should also continue to do that to eight items the gap is narrowed, but nonetheless, we're adding more profit to our production going because each of these are sort of cumulative one step at a time and going from seven to eight yields us some more money, 60 bucks. And the cost of making the eighth item is less than 60 bucks. So we should uh, keep going. We should not, however, go all the way to nine items. See how the, the marginal cost of the ninth item is greater than the price that we could get for it. So it doesn't make any sense to to go out and make nine items because now we'd start to lose money incrementally on each additional item. Where we want to be is right where these two lines cross. Now here we're using pretty big increments, one item, two items, and so on. And this is somewhere between eight and nine. If you thought of this as 8,000 and 9,000 instead of eight and nine or some other bigger numbers, then it's easier to imagine that we could fine tune our production and get as close as we can to where those two lines cross. If we, if we go right up to the point where they cross, each individual increment in production will yield us a little bit more money than it costs us to make, thus adding to our profit. But as soon as we get to the point where it crosses over, we don't want to go any further because each increment then will lose us some money. This magic crossover point is where price, which I've also described as marginal revenue, as in the additional revenue per item, where price or marginal revenue equals marginal cost where those two things cross is the most important place for us to be now what we're going to suggest 
is this firm in a single comp in a single a single firm in a competitive market should stop there. That should be its ideal level of output, somewhere between eight and nine items. And um, what we're going to see now is whether or not this level of output is profitable for them. We know this is the best place for them to be. It'll if they have a profit, it'll be the highest profit. Or if they have a loss, it'll be the lowest loss. So this level between 8 and 9 is going to be the best place for them to be. But are they actually making a profit? Well, here's how we tell. Right here where these two things cross, at this level of output, what we do is we look at the price. And now we're going to call the price the average revenue, how much money on average we get for each item. And because each item we can sell for 60 bucks, the average revenue is 60 and what we do is we compare it to the average total cost here in the green line. You notice how the blue average revenue, the 60 bucks per item, is greater than the average total cost. So for all of these items, up to eight and a half or so items, for all of these items on average, the average money we get is greater than the average money it cost us. So yes, thank God, hallelujah, we're making a profit. Now let's see what happens when the market changes. Remember that original $60 price was set in a marketplace with lots of buyers and lots of sellers. Let's imagine that marketplace changed, maybe as a drop in demand or something like that, and the price fell to $45. So now our price line, the blue line, is down at 45 instead of up at 60. We would still make the same evaluation. What we do is we try to find the place where price or marginal revenue equals marginal cost, and that's right where I'm pointing right here. And that's basically right at seven items. So now, with this lower price, the best place for our um, the best place for our factory to be in terms of production is at seven. That's going to squeeze as much potential profit out of there, or at least reduce our losses. So seven's where we are, where those two things cross. Now, what we want to do, and it's a little hard to tell. You might be able to see it better on your printed copy and from the spreadsheet. What we're going to do is compare the average revenue, which is $45 in this case, and compare it to the average total cost. And if you look closely, the green average total cost line is above the average revenue. So in this case, we're actually not uh, making a profit. We're making a loss. Finally, if we're in this situation, we have to decide whether or not we should keep operating in the short run. Remember, we have some costs that we're going to have to pay no matter what we do. Uh, there's rent on the facilities. We have a contract with a manager that will go through the end of the year. We can't stop it or anything like that. We're paying insurance, taxes, so on. We have some costs that we're locked into. So we have to decide if it makes sense to, uh, given this sort of loss situation we're in now, we have to make sense whether to actually shut down our operations or expand to a... Um, uh, or expand or keep going at least until the end of the year. 